Welcome to Starting Lineup with Andrew Wiebe. I'm Jason Sagini. We're excited. The MLS season has crept up on us. It begins this weekend, 3 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday. Seattle and Kansas City going at it. Make sure you have your teams set for the weekend. Andrew, Look, some housekeeping? You're not going to be ready if you don't download the new MLS Match Day app either. We've made it a big point this offseason. Substitutions are crucial. You've got to be ready. You've got to know who are in the lineups. You're a real manager now. Get that match day app. You can set alerts, Jason, for when lineups come out for any game. So if you have a doubt, a player who may be in or out, that's the time to set an alert. Make sure you check out an article on the site on Friday. Ben Giotto will run through all the ins and outs of the MLS match day app, as well as the mobile fantasy site. That's where you'll actually make the substitutions. All right, now to get to some fantasy advice, because that's what we do here on Starting Lineup. Taking a look at some of the most owned and least owned players, guys that we think you might need to make a switch to your team on. I'm going to start with the defender, the most owned defender in the game, and that is FC Dallas's Zach Lloyd at $5.5 million. By all accounts, it looks like Kellen Acosta is going to be the starting right back for them. He is also $5.5 million, so it's an easy swap to make. I would make that swap. Acosta started and played most of the last game they played against San Antonio, and he scored a goal. Yeah, Acosta's on my team, a guy that nobody really owns that they should. Look, We've harped on it. The Portland Timbers are a fantasy bonanza, and only 7% of you own Maximiliano Uruti. He is going to start up top. He is going to be the focal point of that attack with Nagby, Valeri, and Gaston Fernandez behind him. Think he's going to get a little bit of service? I certainly do. At $7 million, he is a huge bargain, and if you don't have him, certainly pick him up. All right, we, uh, we were talking over coffee this morning, Andrew and I, and we realized we don't agree on everything in fantasy. I actually disagree. That, that is a shocker. Uh, so we're going to take a look at some players that we disagree on. You guys can make your choices. Get your uh, Team Weeby, Team Sagini hashtags ready. And let's start with Michael Harrington. We talked about the Portland Timbers. You say they're a points bonanza. Do you like Harrington at $7.5 million? Yeah, I love Harrington at $7.5 million. Look, he is the most, he is the cheapest, the bargain on that back line. We think they're going to get shutouts. He racked up the points last year, the most on their back line. The other thing, I don't think that I want to spend $6 million on a goalkeeper. I like Donovan Ricketts. I'm just not willing to shell out that money. So at $7.5 million, I like Harrington's left foot. All right, part of this argument is that you can only have four guys from one team. I want Ricketts on my team. I want a couple of the Portland attackers. I think they're going to score a lot of goals. For me, the defender to pick is Paparato. He gets forward on set pieces. Portland has great set piece takers in Valeri and Fernandez. I'm going Paparato over Harrington. Look, I don't hate Harrington as a pick. If he's the only guy you can afford, i just rather have some other guys on the Timbers. Moving on to the next player here, Javier Morales, midfielder for Real Salt Lake. $11 million, one of the most expensive players in the game, Andrew. You like him. Look, I know it's a budget buster. I know you got some options there. You got the likes of Graham Zussi, maybe Will Johnson. I think Morales is the best bet. There's no World Cup for him long term. And we've seen over and over over the past few years, when healthy, this guy just racks up the points from free kicks, from the run of play. I think Real Salt Lake continues. I think Alvaro Sabrio has a huge year. And a lot of that has to do with Javier Morales. Okay, when healthy, Javier Morales getting up there in the years. We've seen him have some injury struggles in the past. I don't think that's the $11 million player I would want on my team, especially for the stretch run of the season. I think there's going to be matchups to play him at, but if you're looking over the course of the whole season, I'd rather have Diego Valeri at $10.5 million than Javier Morales at 11. Oh, look, you're talking about injuries? You're talking about getting up in age? Diego Valeri's bad back is already acting up this offseason. We saw last year playing on that turf, aggravated some injuries. I think both are good plays. I would go for Morales for now. All right, one final guy that we disagree on. This time, I like him, and that's Dwayne De Rosario at Toronto FC. With all the attention that's going to be paid to Michael Bradley, Jermaine Defoe, and Gilberto when he gets out there, I think De Ro is sneakily going to have a good fantasy season for you. $8.5 million is not a ton of money to spend on a midfielder that could have upside of a $10 million player. Yeah, look, I think there are better options at 8.5 and below. I also look at your DPs, and I say, where's Gilberto? Where's Michael Bradley? Where's Jermaine Defoe? Jermaine Defoe and Gilberto not there right now. Michael Bradley, 
Uh, dealing with a little bit of foot niggle. He'll be there. I just don't think it's time for Di Rosario. It's going to take time for that team to gel. I would not pick him up from the start. They don't play in week one, so you don't have to worry about it until ah, week two. Whatever. That's all we got here for this one. But a couple notes. The starting lineup Fantasy League, 1,500 of you are already in there. $200 to the winner on that one. We've also got more than 400 in our Beginners League. Remember, if you are not a first-year player, I am going to boot you out of that thing if I see you in the league. But first year, guys, make sure and get in there. Hey, speaking of terrible fantasy players, there are some rumors that Simon Borg is taking fantasy seriously this year. If that's the case, join the Extra Time Radio League. You can play against him, talk some trash. I don't buy it. I don't know if he has the attention span for it, but we will see. Don't forget, games kick off this weekend. 3 p.m. Eastern time is the first match, and it's a great one. Seattle hosting Sporting Kansas City, the defending champions. Make sure to get your fantasy team set and get all your friends signed up before the weekend.